Alright, hey, and welcome back to another Fishbro video. This one's going to be a Fishbro class video of how to, how to play Unholy Death Knight. Uh, this video is going to feature uh, everything you need to know about an Unholy Death Knight. It's going to start with key... Or, I don't know how, the exact order, but it's going to be key bindings, rotation, cooldown management, how you're going to pull the boss, gearing up in the video, uh, where to find the instances, what to do to gear up, your best in slot list, meaning the absolute best gear that you can get, the utility and necessity around why you're going to need to play Unholy Death Knight and who needs you in a raid, the pre-raid best in slot list, meaning what's the best gear to get before you get into a raid, and your talent setup. Uh, I believe there's nothing else that I can cover and if I haven't I might add it into the video or something but overall this video is going to cover everything you need to know for Unholy DK. Okay so a very important feature every class needs to pay attention to and understand is key bindings. Uh, so the way you're going to play your class is you're not just going to simply use a few spells and oh that's it I can't use any more spells no more abilities as you can see I have some abilities here that I don't use key bindings for because it's kinda out of the way like summoning my ghoul as a death knight it's always uh, gonna be up after you summon it so you really don't need to key bind that for all classes you're gonna have some like buffs and stuff you don't need to put them on key bindings it's not important so I like to just use and uh, keep it simple I like to use two action bars worth of key bindings some classes you might want to use three action bars that's why I have the key bindings out here in case I want to assign them but I sometimes reset my bindings and it's a lot easier just to use two action bars regardless um, so that's macros so key bindings are in the escape options uh, you press the ESC on your keyboard you go to the options menu you press key bindings you're gonna go from the top you're gonna scroll all the way down to where is it at all the way down to multi action bar bindings uh, so we have that there but first I'm going to show you how to activate both action bars from the basic uh, wow window you're gonna go to action bars in the interface so you're, you're pressing escape again you're going to interface you're going to action bars and then you're gonna use bottom left action bar and you're gonna use bottom right action bar and now to set key bindings on these so you can use these abilities uh, in the meantime you can click on this so let's say I want to assign this uh, shift shift uh, spacebar or something I can do it like that now obviously I don't want to do that because I'm not going to change my key bindings but uh, you could do this shift 1, shift 2, shift 3, shift 4 all the way to the equal sign so you can pretty much just uh, use your basic skills by just hitting shift so like uh, I can use my horn of winter by hitting the, the regular key the, the equal sign but if I want to use my, uh, un, uh, my bone shield I would hit shift and then click that ability on my keyboard that that keystroke not click it and like actually clicking it you do not want to be clicking your abilities in game this is very important not to be a clicker because first off people are gonna call you a noob you're gonna be embarrassed and and bashed on whatever but it's also it's a waste of time when you should be focused on the fight you're gonna be needing to click uh, whatever targets you need to click so you can change targets especially if there's many targets on your screen and you need to like let's say you're you're killing six different ads mobs random enemies uh, the the trash mobs that spawn on a boss fight and you need to click on one target specifically you can't tab target him you're gonna wanna click on him if you're spending all your time clicking on your spells it'll take away from clicking on that uh, that enemy most of the time you can tab target as well I will show you tab targeting later on but that's key bindings in a nutshell you should be having at least two action bars I would recommend if you wanna get really good at the game to use the third action bar but I just use a whole bunch of macros anyways as I don't really need those action bars so yeah that's how you do key bindings alright so the best in slot list for unholy DK listed off is the tyrannical beheader uh, the emblem of triumph sigil tier 9 helmet chest shoulders and gloves Woden's lucky necklace ice crown citadel trash BOE which is uh, 
where, where you get the Wodens, the Tapestry of the Frozen Throne, drops from the Lich King in Halls of Reflection. It's the third and final dungeon of the Ice, like Ice Crown Citadel dungeons. Uh, so it's a cape from the Lich King. There's the Titanium Spike Guards. This is a t uh, blacksmithing uh, crafted bracers. The Bent Gold Belt from Pit of Sauron. The first boss, Ick, will drop that. Uh, you can put an Eternal Belt Buckle in there. Uh, leg Plates of Painful Death. Hellfrozen Bone Grinders. Both are crafted blacksmithing BOEs. BOE stands for Bind and Equip. Ice Crown Citadel Reputation Ring. The Ring of Rotting Sinew. Another Ice Crown Citadel Trash Item that is not trash but it's good but the, it drops from trash mobs banner of victory the talk five man normal dungeon trinket the mirror of truth 40 emblems of heroism trinket and your hit caps are going to be eight percent for unholy dk and there's going to be a 26 expertise cap that you're not really going to focus on because expertise is not better than strength but expertise is also not bad you do not want to miss your tax but if you do so be it you just cast your spell again it doesn't really do anything to you uh but the hit cap is very important now to run through these items tyrannical beheader first off right here tapestry of uh Tapestry of the Frozen Throne, right there. <coughs> uh, Orca Hunter's Harpoon, this is pretty decent. The heroic uh, weapon from Marwen in Halls of Reflection. It's not good, but it's decent. Oop, I'm going to Ice Crown Set, I don't know why I'm doing that. Pa Pit of Sauron, Pit of Sauron, right here. The final boss, Scourge Lord Tyrannus drops Tyrannical Beheader. Everybody wants this, so you're gonna have a little bit of uh, time, a little bit of a struggle trying to farm it. But it should drop eventually, maybe uh, two, three weeks. You know, it really de depends on how lucky you are. I've seen somebody farm this for like five weeks before he got it. It's really bad luck, but even then, like five weeks is like the longest you'll ever take to farm this if you're farming daily. Is it uh, not this staff, the the axe? So we'll move on. The Emblem of Triumph Sigil. I use the Sigil, the Hangman. That's for us Emblem Upgrade. So the Emblem of Triumph Sigil is pretty simple to talk about. The tier sets are shown somewhere in the video. You can go find out. Woden's Lucky Necklace. I'll show you the two trash drops from Ice Ground Citadel. Right here. All the way at the end. <coughs> Woden's Lucky Necklace. You're going to want to buy this. And you're going to want to buy Ring of Routing Sanu. Off the auction house, they're both really good uh, buy none equips. Super cheap. If they're extremely expensive on your auction house, that means nobody farms your farms on your server, uh, Ice Crown Citadel. So go ahead and make a 10 man group for Ice Crown Citadel. You don't even need to be geared out to kill the boss, just to kill the trash. And then you farm the trash until they drop a ton of these, and then the price is free because you did it. Uh, so that like that's how you're going to get those two titanium spike guard so we're going to go to uh, crafting blacksmithing the three items you're going to want are hell frozen bone grinders leg plates of painful death and titanium spike guards all three of these the the two here are going to cost 13 primordial serenite each uh some eternal and titan steel and then the bracers are going to cost you a, uh, some titan steel, a vengeance binding, which is just a blacksmithing basic uh, item. It's like some uh, serenite bars and, and something. It's, it costs like 25 gold to make if you, uh, un unless your server is weird and it costs like 100, but don't, don't waste any more than 100 for that. And four crusader orbs. So it's pretty easy to get these three. It just costs gold. If you don't know how to make gold, then go check out my gold making video. So that's the blacksmithing stuff, uh, the craftables, the the cape I talked about, the necklace and the ring I talked about, the Ice Crown Citadel reputation ring, rep farming and ICC is pretty self-explanatory. You just go in there, kill trash, you get reputation. Banner of Victory and Mirror of Truth. Banner of Victory is from uh, Trial of the Champion right here. Banner of Victory is right there. It drops from the Confessor. It's pretty solid trinket for almost every class. And uh, yeah, that's the best of slot list for uh, Unholy DK.
not best in slot, not best in slot, pre-raid best in slot. All the best gear you can get before you enter a single raid. So if you uh, if you don't have time for raiding and you want to get all the best gear before going to a raid and you don't want to get boosted and you want to make sure you're decked out before you enter any raids or anything, go ahead and collect all this gear and then uh, you can enter a raid after you collect all of this. And there you have it. That's the uh, Unholy DK pre-raid best in slot list. All right, boys. I'm excited for this one. This is the Unholy Death Knight uh, best in slot list. And as you can see, I already have my Unholy Death Knights uh, spec, but this is the best in slot list. Uh, it's my main, so I'm very happy about it. Uh, glad you guys chose Unholy. Anyways, it's the tier 10 helmet, tier 10 shoulders, tier 10 chest, tier 10 gloves. It's going to be Scourge Reaver's leg plates from, Ru uh, not Ruby uh Valithria. Valithria 25 man, the Cold Wraith links from also from Valithria, so you're really gonna love Valithria. Ruby Sanctum, you do need Ruby Sanctum loot. You're gonna need the Penumbra's pendant from Halion, and you're also gonna need Apocalypse's advance from Halion. Both are kind of rare. Uh, Sharpened Twilight Scale can replace Death Choice. Heroic Death Choice and Heroic Sharpened Twilight Scale are arguably the best in slot. Uh, it, it's either or they're both really good uh deathbringers will heroic is also best in slot if you don't like rng and you don't like taking chances you can use both uh heroic twilight scale uh and heroic death's choice for consistency in your dps when you're using your gargoyle because you want you want your trinkets to proc before you activate gargoyle then you're going to use your potion of speed and uh the the gauntlets to get maximum DPS. Anyways, the winding sheets from Rotface Heroic are going to be best in slot. The polar bear bracers from Gunship are best in slot, arguably. And here we go. Another argument Ruby Sanctum 25 man bracers. Uh, where is Ruby Sanctum? I don't see it on my list. I don't know why I'm being dumb. Okay, here you go. Umbrage armbands, these are arguably best in slot because it's uh, critical, haste, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't give strength versus here. Strength is more consistent uh, with your gargoyle, gargoyle damage, but arguably the haste and the crit and attack power make up for it. So Umbrage armbands on heroic are better than polar bears bracers, but because I make effective use of the hit rating, I'm not too worried about it. The Polar Bear Racers are 100% effective. Uh, what else are we looking at? Ruby Sanctum 25 Boots, I think I mentioned. Your Ruby, um, Ice Crown Citadel Ring is best in slot. The Skeleton Lord Circle. This is somewhat best in slot, so you can argue between Skeleton Lord Circle and Might of Blight from Fester Gut. Fester Gut is Ice Crown Citadel. I don't know why I'm like not looking at that uh, right here. Fester Gut's ring might of blight as you can see it shares the same same strength same gem socket and the only difference is is a 68 crit and 60 armor pen versus expertise people will argue the armor pen is better than the expertise because you're a dk it'll give you more damage uh expertise isn't as valued but a lot of your damage comes from your melee attacks and if you're do if you're being dodged or parried uh, whatever I don't like you shouldn't be parried but uh, if you're being dodged constantly it can it can cause a drop in your damage so I prefer the extra expertise than I do the the armor pen and then shadow's edge obviously once you get shadow morn that's best in slot uh, legendary shadow morn right here this is best in slot for every class that can use it uh, but if you don't have Shadow Morn, there's a few other good options. Uh, we're going to go to Blood Prince Council. Uh, you're not going to really want Crypt Maker because of the hit rating, but you do want Lord Marigar's Brin Troll. Now, I know you're kind of surprised it's a fast attacking weapon, 3.4 speed instead of 3.6 or 3.7, but it does have a ton of strength. The proc is like constant. It's pretty good. Uh, the... like. The armor pen you would get from this is really not important, 
and it's just a really high damage I like weapon it's pretty easy to get and obviously your best in slot is gonna be a heroic Lich King weapon the expertise is good because you don't get expertise if you got the Glorenzig then you can probably get might of blight making that argument for the skeleton ring not important but if you're getting shadow more than the skeleton ring might be just just might be better especially considering it, your your shadow more procs might get dodged cause a really big damage loss there either way glorenzig or shadow more in our best in slot the sigil of the hanged man is more consistent than the other other sigils it's the best in slot as well and there you have it that's the complete best in slot for unholy dk okay so for unholy death knights the talent setup is going to be improved dicey touch Runic Power Mastery, 5 points in Black Eyes, 5 points in Icy Talons, and, and 2 points in Endless Winter. You might want to go for a sub blood build, uh, depending on what gear you're using, and if you want to try it out. It's kind of fun, but this is called Sub Frost, because you're an Unholy Death Knight with 54 points in Unholy, and 17 points in a sub tree. So it's the tree you're not going fully into, but you're investing some into. So it's a Unholy Death Knight sub frost build. That's what this build is. But the Unholy tree is going to have Vicious Strikes, Virulence. These are the only two you can take that do damage. This is just dodge rating. Uh, Epidemic, 3 in Morbidity, 3 in Ravenous Dead, 4 in Necrosis, 3 in Outbreak, 3 in Blood Cake Blood, 2 in Night, uh, Night of the Dead, 5 in Impurity, 1 in Unholy Blight, 1 in Master of the Ghouls, 5 in Desolation, 3 in Crypt Fever, 1 in Bone Shield, 3 in Ebon Plague Ringer, 1 in Scourge Strike, 3 in Wandering Plague, 5 in uh, Rage of the Riven Dare, and 1 in Summon Gargoyle. Not all, these, uh, not all these talents are completely mandatory. I will go through which are mandatory. This is mandatory, 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 this is mandatory. This is mandatory, this is mandatory, this is mandatory, this is mandatory, this is also mandatory. Again, this is also mandatory, this is mandatory, this is mandatory, this is mandatory, and this is also mandatory. So, I go for a death coil t uh, style build where I take 3 in morbidity so I can have extra death and decay for AoE, area of effect, and then I can also have more single target death coil damage. It gives 15% for the death coil. Uh, combine that with glyph. Of Darth Dark Death, you get 30% bonus on your Death Coil. That uh, synchronizes well with the Unholy Blight. Also, I like this build because even though I'm full Pv PVE and all my damage is focused on PVE, I can still use this to to make it where I can PVP quite well. Any anybody coming up to a PVE Unholy Death Knight and he has Unholy Unholy Blight, this is all you need for PVP. Uh, Lichborn, not super important for PvP, but this is, uh, this is mandatory for PvP, so it's very, very fun having this. Another thing you can get is Desecration. You can grab Desecration if you need the slow in your raid. Your, your raid composition and groups need a slow. You can constantly, uh, pump out slows with your Scourge Strikes and Plague Strikes. So, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good idea to grab this, especially for Lich King. Valkyries, adds, stuff like that. Uh, these are not very important. Improved Unholy Presence is good for PvP only. Uh, Ghoul Frenzy isn't that beneficial. And yeah, that's the Unholy DK's. Uh, pri like this is the primary build that you're gonna take with talents so you can change a few things around to see if you can get a little more damage. But this is generally accepted as the best build that you can get with your talents. Uh, I think I did not mention dirt reaping. So reaping does let you get multiple more scourge strikes because you could turn your blood strikes into unholy runes and then make them scourge strikes. So it's a possibility. Dirge isn't very good. You get a lot of runic power as it is, and you're not off. Like not always are you using your death coils, so it's fine to not take dirge. Corpse explosion is not very good either. And this is just not good because your pet doesn't do all that much damage. And I mean, anti magic, magic zone. Like if if you're okay with not being top DPS and and sacrificing a lot of the damage, you can you can get uh, 
you can get the anti-magic zone uh, defensive cooldown and it could save your raid for a lot of damage okay so that's uh that's pretty much it I think uh, I did not mention icy reach uh, the only reason why you're not gonna take icy reach is because you want five points of black ice it's uh, mostly damage oriented I don't see anybody needing the utility of uh, using icy touches from far away but you know if you're in a fight like on ice how you get knocked away you need to use icy touch so icy reach isn't the worst idea and uh, yeah that's it okay so unholy death knights are actually very unique they are one of the most underrated highly important and they're 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 one of the like there's only one way you can get the buff from an unholy dk and that's by taking an unholy dk so if a good if a if a raid leader is a good raid leader he will always take at least one unholy dk similar to a disco priest where he can shield the entire raid but two disco priests can't shield the same target one unholy dk is all it takes to give the uh the raid buffs that are required so first off crypt feeser Sorry, I can't speak. Crypt Fever gives you 30% increased uh, disease damage. So your disease is caused, Crypt Fever, which increases disease damage taken by the target by 30%. This will increase any disease on, on that target. Fro uh, Frost Death Knights will increase their da damage by 30% from diseases. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Shadow Priests will increase their damage from diseases. Uh, so you can see how that works. Crypt Fever morphs into Ebon Plague. What does this do? Increases magic damage by 13%, uh, meaning all the enemies you use Pestilence on take 13% more damage. It's extremely important. Um, along with Crypt Fever and Ebon Plague Bringer, uh, Unholy DKs will pretty much boost all your magic damage, AoE damage, uh, massively. One Unholy DK can make the difference between doing a lot of damage and not having enough damage. When it comes to AOE having at, like damage for the ads and stuff, so it's uh, unholy DKs are very important in that regard. They also have uh, a lot of single target damage, considering they they have like necrosis, blood cake blade, the the ghouls, the gargoyle. Uh, gargoyle is really solid. Uh, what what's this? Uh, yeah, like you just do a ton of single target damage and you do a ton of AoE damage and there's really no reason you should ever skip out on an Unholy DK. Uh, unholy DKs are extremely important for your raid in regards of AoE damage and single target damage are pretty pretty strong. They're high up there. Uh, they're like, like unless they got a Shadow Morn, they're like, like, eight, like 8 out of 10 maybe 8.5 whereas like a frost dk is 9 out of 10 uh but like an unholy dk can get up there probably 9 out of 10 and, and compete or even out dps most classes uh mages and and mages and warriors fury warriors are the only classes i know that can reliably beat an unholy dk who has a shadow morn but if he doesn't have shadow morn then he's he's not in the top top three but he's still pretty solid dps and very reliable dps for your raid my personal DPS is around twelve to 13,000 without the ICC buff. So if I was using the ICC buff on the server, which uh, the server doesn't provide, it would be around 20,000 DPS, I think, something like that. I didn't do the math, but it would be really high damage. All right, so as an Unholy DK, this is uh, what we're going to get into. It's going to be rotation, cooldown management, and how you're going to pull the boss. First off, you want to summon your ghoul. You want to activate your bone armor right here, bone armor, bone shield. It gives you 20% increased, no, 20% less damage taken. So anything that's not a direct hit won't proc three stacks of bone armor. It gives you 20% reduced damage. So if you're standing in the fire like you always like to do, uh, it really doesn't hurt as much. So it's very good for as a defensive cooldown. But the 2% more damage it deals will increase your DPS. You want to make sure you have these two buffs on. Horn of Winter, you always need to use this right before pulling. Well, not before pulling, but make sure you're buffed with it. Uh, engineering Gloves. Uh, as an Unholy DK, Engineering is pretty much mandatory if you're not a noob. Uh, yes, I'm going to tell you straightforward. You're a noob if you don't have Engineering. Why? Uh, there's a few things that make it super good. 
ex uh, hyper speed accelerators gives you 340 haste for 12 seconds uh, every minute. So this is a uh, like a, like as a if as an enchantment, it's like a 68 haste uh, constant if you keep uh, activating this immediately whenever it comes up. So you're gonna use this at the same time. So the goal is to get as much haste when you summon your gargoyle and make as much procs happen as possible right here if, if you have the same gear as me you're gonna have sharpened twilight scale or death's choice i haven't got a lucky i've done the the raid a million times so don't got sts but deathbringers will death's choice both are gonna proc at the same time cape if you have tailoring your ta your tailoring cape might proc uh... and then you have your rune of the fallen crusader that can proc. You have a lot of things that can proc. You uh, you have like desolation right here. So how you're gonna do it? You're gonna start with icy touch, plague strike, scourge strike. Let's get rid of this. Plague strike, scourge strike. Wait, icy touch, plague strike, scourge strike, uh, blood strike. Then hyperspeed accelerators. That's the gloves. Then uh, empower rune weapon. I usually skip the sixth uh, blood strike just to make sure my potion when I'm pre-potting doesn't wear out uh, and then I do another like scourge strike and then two more scourge strikes so you can get three three stacks of your sigil of the hanged man for the maximum strength possible and then you activate uh, uh, the gargoyle you're also gonna use the army of the dead before pulling so this is how it's gonna go I'm gonna do it before uh, com like explaining all right Pull 15. Okay. Uh, Alright. So this will make it look better. Alright. So here we go. DBM pull 15. You're right in front of the boss. What are we doing? DBM pull 15. At about 9 seconds into the pull timer, you want to activate your Army of the Dead. Get ready to pull. At 3 seconds, you're going to activate your potion. It's 3 or 2. So pop your potion right now. Go. Activate boots. Run, run in. That's not going to happen in a raid. And activate your gargoyle. While... Ah, oh, I wasted a potion for complete fail. <laughs> oh man, I I am so so tilted. I'm making a guy to the, the engineering boost just so I can throw me fly, sky high into the thing. I mean, it's good for entertainment though. So I mean, ah uh, man, and then. So this is how you're going to be doing it. You're, you're going to use your potion and your gloves for a total of 840 haste without doing anything. No no gear, nothing. You have 840 haste before you activate your gargoyle. If you have Deathbringer's Will proccing Tonka, that's another 800, like 700, 800, something like that strength. You're going to have Death's Choice giving you like 450 strength. You're going to have so many stats proccing at once. Your gargoyle is going to do a ton of damage. You can see my gargoyle did uh, 62,500 and we're not even in a in a raid. So that's a lot of damage. Pet should be uh, doing damage as well. Uh, where is it at? Anyways, you make sure you activate Icy Touch, put the, the plague on there. You want three plagues on there, Ebon Plague, uh, Frost Fever, and Blood Plague. Then you just keep activating it, and this is how you do the rotation. You just Icy Touch, Plague Strike, Scourge Strike, then you do Blood Strike, Blood Strike, and then you do another two, two Scourge Strikes afterwards because your diseases are still up there. And then you're going to do two more Blood Strikes. And then you're gonna use two. Uh, you're gonna use all your death coils. You're gonna reactivate icy touch, and then you. This was the full rotation. Just icy touch, plague strike, uh, scourge strike, blood strike, blood strike. Use your uh, plague strikes whenever you're not on cooldown. And let's say you have uh, more than enough runic power and stuff, like, or you don't have enough runic power. Drop a horn of the winter in the middle of your fight for extra runic power. It generates. Tenderinic power, and then you just keep going. Uh, you could use death coils instead of uh, blood strikes for more damage. 
go back to Scourge Strike, then go back to Blood Strike, and just keep doing it. And that's your rotation right there. Uh, some cooldowns that you should be aware of. Anti-Magic Shell is any DK. You're going to use Anti-Magic Shell. Uh, you're about to take a whole ton of uh, elemental damage. Pop it. Boom. You get 50% of your health as uh, magic damage reduction. You get 75% damage reduction from the spells that are going to hit you. If you get Blistering Cold on Sindragosa, you pop Anti-Magic Shell. You don't need to run away. You just face tank it and it'll give you 50% uh, of your health as a shield. Uh, if you want, you can use Icebound Fortitude. Gives you 40% damage reduction. 30%, my bad. Uh, I don't know why I'm so used to seeing 40%. The uh, bone shield, you might like, look, you've been in combat for four, four and a half minutes. Pop bone shield again. You can use blood tap to get your, uh, your rune back. So you can use the death rune to save your rotation. If you need to activate unho or bone shield, you're going to use your death rune. Blood tap, I mean... You're going to use Blood Tap to get your Unholy Rune back, and instead of uh, using a, a Unholy Rune, and you're going to ruin your rotation, because you need two uh, Unholies and two Frost to make sure you're getting two Scourge Strikes in your rotation, you only use Blood Pact, and boom, you got it. You can just activate uh, Bone Shield. I prefer not to use one of these two runes. Uh, so what I do is I use my two Scourge Strike, and then I'll use Blood Tap uh, before using Bone Shield. And it's guaranteed, since both all of these are on cooldown, you'll use uh, Blood Rune. And, and it, overall, it works out. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, I have to wait for the cooldown in five seconds. This is eight seconds, but regardless. <clears throat> Back at it. Let's, let's do this again. I'm going to use this, act like I use my potion, hit it, I got all my procs, I got the, the Frost Forge Champion, I got my Blood Fury from being an orc, I got Indomitable, I got the Paragon of Strength, I got the Hyperspeed Accelerators, I would have my potion, um, if I'm lucky I could get the Rune of the Fallen Crusader and the Deathbringer's Will, but I'm still at the boss, and my Gargoyle is going to do a ton of damage. So, uh, where's the Gargoyle now? You can see the gargoyle's done over a hundred thousand damage uh, from both times I've summoned it, and it's done almost one hundred twenty thousand. So it's done like sixty-five thousand damage, I believe, uh, from the two times that I've summoned it, and that's without all the buffs and the procs and stuff. Like it, it would be doing a lot more damage in a raid. Uh, right here, we're gonna show you how to do this. Let's use all of our runes. We're in the middle of our rotation. We've used these. We're gonna click this and then click this. And it uses the death rune instead of these, and you're fine. Your rotation is completely saved. You don't have to worry. You keep using your scourge strikes now, no problem. You're totally good. Easy peasy. Overall, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. You have uh, mind freeze. If the boss needs to be interrupted, you're going to use mind freeze. You're going to use pestilence whenever there's, uh, there's ads that you can spread your diseases to. You're going to use Death and Decay for AoE as well. You're going to use your Taunt as a utility spell on Sarfang when there's Blood Beasts. Uh, if the beasts are too close to uh, a ranged champion, you can taunt them off of the ranged champion. Uh, you can use Chains of Ice as a slow in raids to stop whatever adds from killing a teammate. Uh, Valkyries on Lich King, you can slow them uh, with Chains of Ice. You can use Strangulate as a secondary backup uh, interrupt. Uh, it interrupts player or it interrupts enemies, but it's also a five second silence. So it's a two two minute cooldown. It's a really good ability. Uh, what else? Death Strike. Death Strike is really good for healing yourself to help out healers. Uh, if you have the mark on Sarfang, you can do self healing, and make it where the healers have an easy time taking care of you. You get really low health. All you gotta do is drop a uh, here. Uh, let's say. Oh, I got the mark on Sarfang. I think I'm going to die. I think I'm going to die. Pop Icebound Fortitude. I'm taking a lot less damage. Self-healing. Drop more self-healing. Just keep doing it. My DPS isn't isn't very noteworthy, but if I die, I'm going to heal the boss for 10% of his max health. So I just keep doing that. I keep doing that. And and I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine to skate on by without the healers uh, worrying too much. You know, any little bit of help you can give to the healers is still help. Uh, you can su you can sacrifice your ghoul. So, like I said on Sarfang, uh, if you get marked with the thing and you need to heal, you still have Death Pact. 
drop it, 11,400 health heal. That's like a Holy Paladin slapping you with a Holy Light. It's it's a very big heal. Uh, and that's about it for all the, the abilities that you have as an Unholy DK. Uh, I don't think there's any abilities that I haven't covered that you can use as an Unholy DK. Uh, or that you would use that I don't personally use myself. I use all the abilities and uh, Unholy DK makes full use of the class. It's a very good and powerful uh, like class. So there's that. Alright guys, so this is where you're going to find your basic gear. This is going to be item level 219 gear. I'm going to show you right here. It's going to be um, the Forge of Souls. You'll see all this gear. You can stop the video um at any time there's two bags this is for heroic that's this is all the normal loot i'm gonna try to go over it quickly so you can pause the video whenever you see an item that you think you need that's heroic right here okay this all is for here this is uh what leads to the forge of souls that's where you'll find all that loot these are the ice crown ice crown citadel uh wrath of the lich king dungeons they're the hardest dungeons but you can start doing them at level 78 they're not super hard but they do take effort and they take a while to farm up uh the next dungeon you'll see right here this is the for uh the pit of sauron not the forge of souls uh this is the pit of sauron as you can see there's some decent items okay I'm gonna try to go through this a little bit faster okay and heroic uh, a worthy note the never melting ice crystal and the What's it called? A uh, Forge of Souls. It's the the needle encrusted scorpion. These aren't the worst trinkets in the world, but they are not good trinkets. And there's much better that you can get, um, which I will show you in a second. But just uh, take note: if you do get these trinkets, you'll be replacing them in your gearing process. They give you higher gear score, but not the best item or not the best damage that you can get. Halls of Reflection, this is the last one. This is where Wrath of the Lich King quest takes place uh, and where Wrath of the Lich King begins. Uh, as you can see, the door opens up. These are the items. This is a decent, tr this is a decent trinket for healers, by the way. Um, and then Lich King right here. This is uh, normal loot. And heroic. Okay. Uh, you're going to want to do yourself a favor and download Atlas Loot if you have not. Uh, so you can see these items for yourself and you don't have to come back to the video. Anyways, <coughs> these three dungeons are the basics. Uh, this is where you're going to make pre-made groups like usually at like level 78 79 or level 80 depending on if you're behind the curve or not I like to do it at 78 or 79 just so I can get experience while I'm trying to gear up at level 80 and then I also as soon as I hit level 80 it's exciting it's like oh my god I got like all these level 80 epics and stuff that I can get you know what I'm saying uh, that's why I do these beforehand but once you're level 80, you want to do pre-made groups. Even if you've been level 80 for like months and months, uh, these dungeons give you emblem. Uh, these dungeons give you emblems of triumph for your tier 9 set. If you don't have the frost emblems for a full tier 10 set, they give you the basic loots that I just showed you, and these are very useful dungeons. So make sure to hit them up if you have not yet already. There's a few other things I will show you in this video, uh, but that's uh, in the next clip okay okay so this is where you're going to be getting first off you're going to be leveling up all your weapons and skills here just by auto attacking these targets uh this will automatically level up your skills because they are out world like they're they're open world targets 
but they're also training dummies with infinite health and they don't attack you. And this is a passive area, so you could just sit here and auto attack them until your skill is 400. So, as you can see, most of my skills are 400 here. If I wanted to, I could just grab swords and I could train them on those dummies. Also, this is their Trial of the Crusader 5 man dungeon. You're not going to be doing this dungeon on heroic, you're going to be doing this dungeon on normal. Alright? You're going to change the dungeon difficulty from. Uh, dungeon difficulty heroic to five player normal if you haven't and you're gonna check out these trinkets real quick before I change uh, before I end this clip uh, a little, little where is it at trial of the champion it's not trial of the crusader this is trial of the champion <clears throat> so the first trinkets banner of victory this is for armor pen using classes you get the attack power proc too uh paladins also use this as an early trinket because of the attack power it's really good abyssal rune this is good for cat spell casters it gives you the 590 uh proc with 84 haste very good trinket abyssal rune this only drops off of the wait no it drops off of both of them so that's abyssal rune uh so you, casters have a better time farming here than the uh the melee attack champions because you only get it from the priest not the paladin for melee this is also where the healers and the tanks have a good time all you got to do is kill the black knight the last boss and you get the healer trinket this is really good paladins will use this a lot most classes will use this it gives intellect and a chance of getting 500 uh, mana anytime it procs the proc chance is pretty high and it happens quite often uh, black heart is also an extremely good trinket you get 7056 armor for 10 seconds and it, it's uh, it happens every 45 seconds so it has a 2 ninths uptime and it gives you 126 stamina if you do the math uh, it basically gives you a thousand armor and 126 stamina making it one of the best trinkets available as uh, as an early tank it's a very good trinket uh, you could play around with the, the proc to make it a defensive cooldown user where you use defensive cooldowns when the proc is not happening anyways those are your trinkets where you're gonna get them from uh, early game uh, gearing up so there you have it all right, so this is where you're going to get your basic gear from Delarin. So first off, let's address something that you need to know. I'm going to say this for the clip that's going to go in every video. First off, all the items from here, most of this gear is not good for offs offset pieces. You're going to be buying four tier 10 items, so four tier set items, and you're going to buy one offset item or use one offset item. Uh, the belts here are pretty good. Okay, so the belts are decent, the capes are decent, um, the trinkets are decent as well, but you do not want to use hit trinkets. This is a very bad trinket. Herkumi's war token is pretty good. The belts are good too. Uh, the PvP gear, you can buy it if you want for PvP, but you don't want to prioritize PvP over PvE because PvE is how you get your frost emblems. This is good for uh, Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic. Otherwise, you don't want this chess piece. Um, what else? I know I'm saying um a lot. I'm sorry. Purified Lunar Dust is decent for healers. Some healers, not Paladins. Paladins don't want that, but like Resto Druids would. The Sigil is good for some classes. The Cape's good too. Uh, Primordial Serenite, you were going to use some of these. You're not going to buy them with Frost Emblems because you have higher priorities. If you have absolutely everything you need, you'll buy Frost Emblems. But if you don't, you do not want to waste your Frost Emblems on Primordial Serenite because they should be pretty cheap uh, and you can purchase them with gold. They drop off of bosses in Ice Crown Citadel as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to come here... Tanks will be using this Clutch of Fortifications ring early on. Most of the rings are good uh, early on. The wand is good as well. The shoulders do not get baited into these. These are not better than your Tier 9 set. Unless, for some reason, your class does not use the Tier 9 set, which I should have explained in the video for each class in specific. You're going to be... Tanks will be using the, the armor trinket... The DPS will not use these hit trinkets. These are terrible trinkets. They give you hit rating, but you should be way over capped if you're using these because these are not effective. And also, the proc trinkets are much better and have a high, higher uptime than the on-use trinkets. So, if you have a proc trinket, if it has a 45-second cooldown, and it's like... 10 seconds for 45 seconds, it would be a 2 ninths uptime, 
this is 20 seconds out of two minutes it would be one like one sixth essentially it's really not as well so you're gonna get your trinkets from this vendor emblem of heroism right here so sundial of the exiled this is for spellcasters the mirror of truth is for critical hit and melee ranged so like physical damage and spell damage the egg of mortal essence it's decent the this trinket isn't the worst if you're having a rough time farming talk and stuff you can buy this early on it's really not that bad what else uh, there was another one this is not a good trinket this is not a good tank trinket so you're gonna wanna farm the uh, the the trial of the crusader and you're gonna wanna farm uh, triumphs emblems of triumph for this and you're going to get the Glyph of Indomitability as a tank. And so these two trinkets are not going to be used for DPS. This is going to be used for a tank. And I think I forgot to mention this one. Yeah. Talisman of Resurgence will be used for uh, healers. Most healers would absolutely love 128 intellect along with 600 spell power whenever they need it for 20 seconds. Obviously, there's a lot of times your tank has defensive cooldowns and he's not taking too much damage and stuff, but sometimes you really need that spell power. So, this is a better, like, use trinket because healers have less um co consistency with the heals and they can just like power heal one second and then not heal so i mean it's it's a good it's a good trinket in my opinion um yeah so back in the ranch these are the two best dps trinkets before raiding they're better than the faz pause trinkets that i mentioned earlier in the video um where is it the pit of sarn pit of sarn there we go they are better than the never melting ice crystals as you can see, this right here, it's 84 crit and 590 spell power versus 111 spell power and 920 crit for 20 seconds. And it only lasts for, it, it has a three minute cooldown. The three minute cooldown is what really makes this trinket, uh, like, not so good. Because you're not guaranteed all five crits as well. So that's even bet worse because you don't get all five crits and then the spell power is kind of all right. Some class, no, no, I need to mention this. Some classes can use the never melting ice crystal and abuse it because if you use this early on and then you use like vampiric plague, if you're a priest or like a warlock that uses like some sort of disease dot and you just keep refreshing that dot, refresh, 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 your, your dot will never change. So it'll have all the stats that you had at the pull when you did this, like did it. So it'll have a 920 crit throughout the entire fight, right? Some classes can do that, but most classes won't be using this. So that's that's a necessity to mention. All right. I'm going to end the clip for these basic gears over here, right here. We're going to move on to the tier sets. Okay, so this is where you're going to get your tier 9 and tier 10 set right here. So... We're going to get our tier 9 set, tier 10 set from, what's his name? Horace Hunderlin. He's in the blacksmith shop on the Horde side. As you can see, Horde side bank over here. The well is right here. The blacksmith shop is right here. You come inside, you talk to Horace. The way the, the shop is organized is you have the DPS set here. Then you have the tank set. So it's the first five right here, all DPS. Second five, all here tank so it goes like that you got tank stuff here still you got tank stuff here the only time it changes is at the very end on the heroic marks when you got the the ultra tier tier 10 gear set and this is where you're going to get it uh it's going to be the tank first five and then it's the dps first five so this is where your tier 9 set is you get them with triumph emblems it's pretty easy you only need um, if you're if you're going for the pants, then you need an extra 50. But most of the time, you only need uh, 160. I think it's a uh, 80 plus 80. That's 160. Yep, I I did correct math. Woo. Anyways, that's where you get your tier tier nine set. Um, we'll move on to where the mages, where the cloth users and leather users use their set. All right. Thank you for reaching the end of the video. I really do hope that you guys have learned something and that you are on your way to becoming one of the best unholy DKs that you can be. 
I'm pretty sure I covered everything. If there's something I missed in this video, you can always let me know in the comment section. I'll answer all your questions and whatnot. If you have any, you can sub in some gear if you can't get all the good gear that you need to get, whatnot. Uh, but overall, I think I covered everything. Thank you for watching, and I bid you all a farewell. Don't forget to smile. Bye. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your notifications on to let me know you'd like more of my content.